Hey man, good to see you. How's your flying going? Hey, good, good. What about you? Yeah, fine. Hey, by the way, what navigation app are you using there? Well, it's actually an electronic flight bag, not just a navigation app. It's called a ForeFlight. What are you using? I'm using SkyDemon. Great stuff. Uh, had the two, not very advanced, isn't it? Mm, works great for me. It's really easy to use. There are airspace warnings, all that I need. Uh, I don't think so. They don't even offer Jefferson's approach plates. There's no electronic checklist. And how do you even calculate your takeoff and landing performance with that thing? Mm. Got a copy of the charts from the POH. <laughs> As I said, not very advanced. Where's your IFR auto router? Don't fly IFR, I fly VFR. Ah, right, VFR only pilot, huh? Excuse me? Do you think you're something better just because of your stupid app? And didn't you start your IFR training only a couple of weeks ago? Okay, man, you know what? Let me be honest with you for a second. I mean, we both know that four flight is by far better than that Sky Demon thing. If you want to be a real pilot, don't you think it's time to get rid of that baby hobby pilot stuff there and get a tool for professionals like me? Okay, now I'll be honest with you. I think you're an arrogant <laughs> idiot who has no <laughs> manners and you look like a <laughs> with your ridiculous shirt and I don't ever want to talk to you again. Come on, man. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in again and welcome to this video. I know the little intro sketch there might be a bit exaggerated, however, I have uh, to say that I actually took uh, my inspiration for that uh, from some uh, forums where the question which of the common uh, planning and navigation apps is best is uh, being discussed very, very emotionally. I uh, therefore promise I will try to do my best to keep this uh, little comparison as unbiased as I possibly can. So uh, let's get going. First of all, this uh, channel is fairly new. If you want to know a bit more about me, about what this entire channel is all about, make sure to check the little intro video that I just recently did here in the top uh, right corner. So uh, why ForeFlight and SkyDemon? I can already imagine the comments that people are typing in now. Everybody calm down. I know there's a ton of great navigation apps out there on the market. The reason I'm comparing ForeFlight and SkyDemon here today is because A, I think they have uh, quite a big market share here in Europe for the time at least. Although I have no uh, numbers to back that up honestly. But more importantly because B, I have actually been flying with uh, both of these apps in the past so I know them a little. Now how do I want to set up this uh, comparison here? In order to keep things as practical as possible, I want to invite you to join me on to a little uh, VFR flight here uh, within Switzerland today. We'll cover all the main steps all the way from the flight planning to the debriefing uh, in a practical manner. However, if I wanted to show you every single little feature of the both uh, apps, it would uh, take me several hours and uh, I don't think uh, you want to spend that much time uh, listening to me. I decided to uh, split this video into Two parts will cover a little overview together with uh, the, all the pre-flight and planning stuff in the first video here and uh, we'll then go flying in the second one to show you how both of these uh, apps look in flight. We'll see how they look if you want to review and debrief your flight and then uh, dive a little deeper in some additional features. To finish we'll check out the pricing of each of the two and I'll give you a little roundup. Uh, what I like and actually what I not like. i also let you know which of the two apps I'm presently using myself in the end. Here's a little chapter overview um, with a timeline so you can skip a chapter if you uh, wanted to. So here we go. To be really honest the battle between these two really isn't a fair one. It's more of a David against Goliath battle. ForeFlight is a US company from Houston, Texas. They are clearly the market leader in the navigation app segment in the United States. They came into the European market about two years ago and have implemented a number of new features. Partly also features mainly for the European pilots. 
uh, in a ridiculously high pace actually and in the meantime basically all European countries are covered and being supported. Forvalad has been acquired by Boeing in the meantime that was uh, I think in the beginning of 2019. They are now a sister company of Jetbusiness which is also a Boeing company. Forflight uh, has approximately 180 employees, so uh, that's why I'd call Forflight is uh, the Goliath in this uh, comparison here. Forflight uh, themselves, they call their app an integrated flight app, meaning they provide uh, a single product for every little step required to successfully complete a flight from start to finish. They are targeting all sorts of customers from uh, commercial uh, and business pilots flying IFR only or IFR VFR mixed operations in jets or turboprops to uh, a ultralight pilot who only flies VFR. Forflight only works on iOS devices, Android devices are not being supported. As I said, the app is constantly being improved and updated. They are, they are publishing a new release uh, once every single month, which also means that if you're watching uh, this video in a year from now, the screencasts I'll be showing in the next minutes here might actually be outdated already. Now let's uh, look at Sky Demon. They're a small company based in the southwest of England. They started uh, developing their app back in 2010. They have a small core team of just four main staff actually. That's why I think it's fair to say that Sky Demon plays the David part in this comparison. Unlike many other app providers, the team at Sky Demon is not buying the data sets required to design a map from uh, Jeppesen, but instead somehow build and implement them in-house actually, which might sound like a disadvantage, but actually means that they are really flexible with implementing small regional changes. Skydemon is really focusing on VFR only flying, providing a user interface that is in fact very easy and pretty intuitive to work with. As with ForeFlight, you can also plan a flight in Skydemon, check the weather and the no terms and all of that, do the mouse and balance and file a flight plan from, from within the app. Skydemon provides coverage for all of Europe, the US and even some African countries. A big advantage for some is that the app itself is available not only on iOS but also on Android devices plus a dedicated uh, software for planning your flight is available for Windows PC. We'll be focusing on the portable app itself though uh, in this comparison. Now let's first look at the thing you'll be using um, the most as a pilot, which is of course the map. You're seeing both apps uh, side by side here, Skydemon on the left, Forflight on the right. I have uh, both apps in the portrait mode to fit uh, them both into the video here. You can of course also use both of them uh, in landscape mode. What you're looking at here is the area around Bern, which is uh, Switzerland's capital at roughly the same zoom level. These are the base maps with a useful setup for VFR pilots and uh, these are both vector or data driven charts where the presentation and details change depending on the zoom level. Right away it becomes clear and obvious that uh, Skydemon displays a lot more details, names of small towns and cities, while ForeFlight uh, barely shows any of those. Even when zooming further in the details and place labels of uh, smaller cities, rivers and so on won't show up. Some of course like this, I find it a little too minimal and I'd like to see more details here. Skydemon does a better job there, there's no information overload and still an adequate level of uh, details in my opinion. In both of the two you'll uh, see visual approach procedures popping up when uh, zooming in. Now let's say you want uh, to change the style of the map for some reason. In ForeFlight you'll have the basic choice of a light, dark and a classic scheme. For the details, six uh, quick access buttons on the left will uh, show or hide some important layers such as airspaces, airways and VORs, roads and all that kind of stuff. If you want to further customize the map, you can access uh, the settings button in the top row. There you will be able to change the way terrain is being displayed, which kind of cultural elements and be, are being shown and uh, which airspace classes you want to see. It is however not possible to change the colors of airspaces or anything like that. Customizing the chart in Sky Demon works a little different. You have the basic choice of the chart style you want to use. 
There are three dedicated Sky Demon chart stars. There is a high contrast slash night mode available and uh, two uh, national color schemes, the UK and the German scheme where the vector chart will closely resemble the, for example, the DFS paper charts. The details can also be adjusted by tapping on the little layer select in the bottom right. Now speaking of paper charts, when uh, we look back on the right side, uh, Forflight offers more than just uh, this base map we're looking at right now. By tapping at the layer selector on the left, top left there, you can also uh, display a street and an aerial map. However, these uh, base maps are not available offline, so they're uh, of no use in flight. What I have bought separately is the digital version of uh, Switzerland's VFR sectional chart or a KO chart, whatever you want to call it. You're seeing uh, it right now here. I know there's people who still rely on the old fashioned paper charts. Others uh, prefer the vector maps. It's up to you what you'll uh, like better. The paper chart uh, lets you see all of the details. They often come from the official providers and you might uh, be used to them a little better. However, there's uh, of course no custom uh, zoom levels and everything's going to be upside down when you're flying uh, in tracker mode from uh, north to south. What I like is that uh, Forflight offers both. However, the vector driven uh, base map still leaves a lot to be desired in my point of view, as I already said. Forflight has uh, brought out a couple of updates to the base map already and uh, they have promised they will further improve that. An additional option that I appreciate in Forflight is that it will allow you to import all kinds of charts in the MB tiles format. Uh, for example, free charts uh, from the Open Flight Maps project. You can also georeference charts yourself, like I did with a smaller scaled uh, Zurich area chart that you are seeing uh, that you are seeing right now. I will do a separate video if you are interested how uh, the georeferencing of a PDF works with an external software in the next weeks. Just uh, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. With uh, Sky Demon, it's unfortunately not possible to uh, buy any raster paper charts, nor can you import them in any way. Before the flying usually comes the, the flight planning. Let's uh, look at this process step by step in each of these apps. As I said before, we'll be departing Bern. We'll uh, take a Cessna 172 and fly VFR uh, from Bern to my home base, which is called Feraldorf in the east of Zurich. In Vorflight, there are two ways to start the planning. You can do so by either going to the flights tab, which you would uh, usually do when planning an IFR flight. As we are flying VFR today, we, we first want to uh, define our exact routing. Therefore, we'll uh, start on the maps tab here. Now, as you see, I'm expanding the flight plan section in the top row here. We uh, have our Cessna 172 selected with the tail number. To uh, create a route, you can either enter waypoints in the route section or tap on the map to add a waypoint uh, to your route. We're doing so now by tapping on Burns Airport. And uh, afterwards, we're entering the destinations airport identifier in the route section. By holding and pulling on the route, we can uh, make adjustments to it. Creating the route in Sky Demon works equally simple. You can just tap at each departure and destination there. By holding and pulling on the route, we can uh, make adjustments to it. Now we're mentally approaching uh, the complex uh, Zurich airspace, there as you can see, and we're looking for a way to fly around and below that. Let's assume you want to find out more on uh, one of these airspace sectors uh, here. For example, their bottom and top altitudes. 
by tapping and holding on the area you're interested in, you'll open the What's Here menu in Sky Demon. Then you'll uh, see the vertical airspace situation on the left. Additionally, a bunch of uh, frequencies you could call if you wanted to know more on the activation times. Skydemon unfortunately doesn't show that the CTR we're seeing here is actually called CTR2 and is not active all the time, which is why you usually won't have to route around this kind of airspace during daytime. This is actually a good example why official charts can be sometimes uh, a good thing. In Fall Flight the process is uh, similar. You don't have the vertical layers, but the rest is about uh, the same. Once you've finished your route, you can also go uh, through a quick vertical profile planning to find the right altitude for each section of a flight here at the bottom of the screen in Sky Demon. In a flight you can uh, see a profile, but you can only plan one cruise altitude there. Let's first uh, finish our planning here in Sky Demon. By expanding the white box here, we can uh, specify all the details on uh, our flight, our departure time, the cruise power, and uh, also do the weight and balance calculation for the aircraft, which of course needs to be set up separately before. Weather information is available in the weather tab on the top and covers a rainfall radar, meteors and TAFs, winds aloft and the GAR 4. SIGMET warnings and uh, weather specific to our route and the stations along the planned uh, flight route are available on the blue weather tab on the right. Same applies to the NOTAMs, which you will also be able to depict on the map. You can uh, pack all the information into a briefing package, which uh, contains basically all what we've uh, already seen. Finally, we can also file a flight plan from here. Of course, again, you need to set up everything for your specific aircraft before. This all works uh, very simple and intuitive. In Forflight we can as well overlay weather and no terms onto the map. Weather-wise we have a little more choice than in Sky Demon. In addition to what we have seen uh, there before, there's a satellite image. We can overlay some uh, specific information from meters at different stations like the temperature, the visibility, sky coverage, ceiling and all that kind of stuff. The full meters and tabs can be found uh, by clicking at the airports directly. From here on the workflow is a little different and uh, pretty cool if you're a bit nerdy like I am. Uh, to continue the planning here we uh, need to uh, send our planned uh, routing to the flights tab. I have to say that I'm currently using the highest possible subscription plan here uh, in ForeFlight which also offers uh, the biggest amount of features obviously, so some features on this tab uh, are not available when you're going with the cheaper plans. I'll tell you more about the pricing in the end of the second part of uh, this series. In the flight tabs you can specify some more details on your flight again, the planned departure time, confirm your selected aircraft, the routing and the altitude. Thereafter we'll uh, enter some data on the loading, which will uh, give you a warning if you are too heavy, for example. It is uh, not a full weight and balance for some reason. For the detailed weight and balance, you go to more and then uh, weight and balance. Actually, I don't know why ForeFlight doesn't include the entire weight and balance uh, calculation right away here into uh, the workflow. The loading information we entered here will also help the app to generate an accurate fuel calculation and especially the performance calculation that we're gonna be looking at right now. Let's scroll back up to the top again. Next to the departure and destination, you're seeing a takeoff and a landing button. By clicking on takeoff, we're seeing our entire takeoff calculation for this flight. Of course, you'll briefly need to enter the exact aircraft model with uh, the engine it has uh, in and maybe give some more details on the configuration. Once you did that, however, ForeFlight is able to calculate the distances and climb rates based on uh, your aircraft's POH. They actually went through a ton of uh, common GA aircraft to merge all the tables into their systems. So the data we're looking at is uh, now 100% correct for this very aircraft here under the today's meteorological conditions in Bern. I went uh, through the POH to recheck all the data with uh, the given conditions. It took me about uh, half an hour with all the 
interpolation and in the end I found the values were exactly right and 100% consistent with the AFM. You could even add a safety distance factor if you're not convinced that your plane will meet the POH values because it's a little older for example. Or if you like me think that you might not be flying as good as the test pilot who figured out these values one day. If the calculator detects that for example the available distance is not enough uh, for, with a calculated performance it will uh, generate a warning. I know this uh, might sound a bit nerdy maybe and uh, not very practical for some situations but I have read more than enough accident reports where people crashed because they were too optimistic with uh, what the aircraft can deliver in hot and high conditions when heavily loaded. So I think especially here in Europe where runways are usually a little uh, shorter than in the US uh, this feature can offer a safety benefit. Anyway, before I look like a four-flight fanboy, let's move on. Back here at the top we can attach external documents to our flight like for example an additional weather chart that I uploaded in here. To finish we can finally retrieve a nice little briefing package which contains some weather information and a list of the notams and then I get to the bottom of the screen again to file our flight plan. Then uh, we're basically done. Now, by the way, if you were to uh, plan an IFR flight, you'd usually start your planning workflow the other way around here in the flight section. Choose one of the proposed Euro control validated routes and then send the flight to the maps tab for the flight itself. Now there, we are finally done with the flight planning. It's time to go flying. We'll be getting airborne in the second video of this series. Please quickly hit the th thumbs up button there and follow me to the next video.